Here, at home, our trails are well-traveled. We commute on familiar streets and sidewalks. We play on well-marked slopes and well-worn paths. We know the shortcuts, the scenic routes, and the long ways around. And, for the most part, there are no surprises waiting for us around the next bend. Our routes often become so routine. It's easy to forget that there are places left in the world where maps have less detail. La capital es Santiago, sí señor. Yo soy chileno dos veces, con doble honor. El San Cristóbal se le va para subir a la Virgen María. Y desde arriba se mira con alegría el Santa Lucía. Sí, señor. Y a pocas horas de nuestra capital. It was curiosity and a quiet desire to flee British Columbia's spring rains that prompted our flight to South America. We planned to traverse the Andes, riding from the eastern slopes in Argentina to the western plains of Chile. We would finish in the Atacama Desert, the driest place on earth. In the Atacama, we'd been told, it might be possible to ride historical trade routes and unmapped game trails through the high mountain passes. But first, we'd have to weather the snowy Andes and connect with a local mountain bike community in Argentina. Well, apparently, a bunch of snow fell. How much snow fell? Quite a few meters. <laughs> <laughs> the border's currently closed. Can't make it to Argentina. We're currently waiting to see. There's a slight possibility that it might open within the next 45 minutes. This would be to go around the snow? <clears throat> yeah, I'm just trying to see where our next main crossing, yeah. It'd be like two days drive. Yeah, apparently, apparently a big snowstorm went through and another one's coming on its way. So we're hoping to sneak in between systems. We're gonna find out, otherwise it's looking like it'll be closed till Saturday. It's four days away. What should we do? Chilean police say it's closed. Um, not passable. Argentina border patrol say it's open all the way through to Chile. Some snow has fallen fresh dusting on the mountains, and uh, all we can do is go and see. Mm -hmm. Round two, Paso Seco. The locals call these storms the white winds. On the high plains, furious winds funnel past volcanoes, leaving some areas covered with snow drifts meters deep and scaring others to sheets of ice. Even a few centimeters of snowfall can take days to clear. Spotty communication between border stations means that the only way to know a highway is clear is to drive deep into the mountains, day after day, to see them yourself. 500 more meters of climbing and exactly 106 kilometers to go. Yeah, it's not looking passable today.
After a week of exploring back roads and watching the snow line yo-yo amongst the highest peaks, we managed to sneak through the Andes between storms. Finally, in Argentina, we met the Jojoy Wildfire Patrol, who were excited to share remote access routes, but warned us about more bad weather headed our way. The new storm would close every mountain pass between Argentina and Chile. With the days left in our trip dwindling, we couldn't afford to be stranded on the wrong side of the mountain range. Our options were to drive thousands of kilometers to the south to the only tunnel through the range, or try our luck at the border and hope they would let us over the mountain pass. Crossing our fingers and betting on the pass, our luck finally turned and we made our last voyage into the Andes. The long drive back through the mountains was a quiet one. Weeks of trying to overcome snow and rain in the Atacama Desert had taken their toll on our energy and we were both in a state of exhaustion. We met up with the Chileans we had befriended during our first days of recon. Equipped with their backcountry insight and what we had observed on our early exploratory rides, we set out to conquer the Chilean leg of our bike route. After two weeks of struggling with weather and highways, leaving the truck behind and riding into the stillness of the desert was surreal. It was so cold last night. I wore my knee pads. Mr. Warm. 4,000 meters in the Andean winter. <laughs> I was snuggly warm. I was snuggly warm. Scattered along our route lay the ruins of the region's industrious past. Making the most of what this landscape offers, the people who once lived here were resourceful as ranchers and masters of building with stone. As new generations were drawn away to the cities, they gave these places back to the desert, leaving them silent and still. The Vicuñas have keen eyes for finding good routes through the desert. For centuries, their tiny hooves have trod the same trails that we were now following, through landscapes we could never have imagined. Following these rugged paths rarely left even the imprint of a tire. With a whisper and a buzz, we passed through the desert and were forgotten. Each night, as the sun disappeared below the horizon, we transitioned from summer riding to winter camping and tucked ourselves in, away from the biting winds. 
Winter in the Atacama can see the temperature fluctuate as much as 30 degrees in a single day. Despite losing the Argentinian leg of our trip to weather, we had reached and ridden on ground where no bike had gone before. Every new trail you travel, on or off the beaten path, brings uncertainty. Riding bikes in a place like this forces you to pay attention to the terrain, listening closely for its suggestions on how to move through it. Instead of success and failure, you begin to think in terms of adaptation and forward motion. As with many things in life, it's not about where we end up, but how we overcome the challenges along the way. By confronting uncertainty, we build ourselves an ever-expanding framework for how we face the world and respond to it, enriching our experience and giving context to the comfort of the known. Y que mi corazón no ha palpitado.